after the ball is over, after the skein is done, after the die lots finished, and you are short just one. Many a knitter has made a tearful and desperate call, pleading with their local yarn shop, go after that ball. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Pen, Hook, and Needles podcast, episode two. Oh, no, 4.55. Today is Saturday, May 22nd, 2021, as we are recording. I am Harlesha, also known as Lady Furnico. And I'm Talia, also known as Franciscan Gypsy. We want to welcome all new and returning viewers to the Fun in the Woman Cave. If you are new, we're glad you found us. We hope you find something you enjoy and that you will return to visit us often. If you are returning, we're glad to have you back, as always. And if you are new or returning and you're kind of hidden in the shadows... Please feel free to join officially. Just you know, press gently that little subscribe button and uh, the little bell there. Tap it so you can get notifications when we come up and kind of push us up on the, on the search engine. And if you want to join and take part in the alongs that you hear about on the podcast and all the fun things that happen, that takes place at our home, and that is ph um, phnpodcast.freeforums.net. So it's phnpodcast.freeforms.net. It's in the description box below the video. And that will take you there. All you have to do is say you want to enter, and either Talia or myself or one of our wonderful moderators will let you in. We just want to make sure you're not a bot, okay? Um, okay. We do want to do tea? Yes. How many projects do you have? Eight. I do two, but you have one FO, so you first. Okay. In my, this is what my daughter's head looks like mug. That is an oboe, and there is a story about that. For those of you who are new, you can ask. I have Plum Deluxe Tea, Chocolate Mint Like the Cookie Oolong Tea. Enjoy a treat. Oolong Tea, see, Oolong Tea, Black Tea, Cocoa Pieces, Cocoa Peel, Peppermint, Roasted Coconut Chips, Vanilla, Mint Essence. Uh, has caffeine, which I definitely need today. <laughs> We love our plum deluxe tea over here. We do. Um, as for me, let me give my mm. tea, <clears throat> tea a stir. Sorry about the slurping. It's a little hot still. Not really hot, but a little hot. And I'm going to show off my new spoon. I have a set that looks like this. I'm not sure if you can t tell how shiny. It's shiny, all, shiny. all multicolored. It wasn't uh, too expensive either. You get in this, it's stainless steel. They have different colors and it has a spoon, two kinds of straws, a fork. Metal straws. Metal straws. Yes, it's all stainless steel. Um, one's bent, like this one. Well, and it is the metal straw, yep. And one's a uh, straight straw. Then I have, um, as a cleaner for the straws, fork, knife, spoon. Chopsticks. And chopsticks. So I have a couple sets scattered through the house and one in my uh, purse. So that way I always have one. And I have a set that does not have the chopsticks or the, the straws in it. I forgot to bring it over here, but that was a stash enhancement. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because sometimes I can't open my jaw enough to eat something that's, you know, really a certain thick. size. So mm -hmm. I, and I don't like having to ask at the sandwich shop or something. They don't have... Right. Knives and forks. Mm -hmm. And even Chinese restaurants don't always have knives for some reason. And I, I've i <coughs> always liked to have chopsticks with me. I have a really nice pair that you guys got me that stays in my purse. Um, so I can eat with chopsticks whenever I want to. And I can use chopsticks. I just don't do it often enough to make it worth my while. Mm -hmm. So I will just simply um, use the, the other thing. I have to put it in my purse. I still want to wash my... And mine has a wood handle to it. Ty mm -hmm. picked it out for me. I didn't know she was going to do it. So I... And I, you know, so I have that. Well, it was the nicest <clears throat> one for the best price. Mm -hmm. And um, you didn't need want or need all the other stuff, mm -mm. so. Nope. You didn't say what your tea was. Yes, I'm sorry. Um, my tea is Simpson and Vale, Jane Austen, 
So I thought it didn't have caffeine in it. There's caffeine. Okay. Um, I actually wasn't caring whether or not I had caffeine this time or not, but because I already had my morning coffee. Mm -hmm. Yes, I do drink coffee in the morning. Um, it's a. It's been fairly recent that I've restarted. I have to drink it fairly weak, and then I'm um, very diluted. I'm very diluted with milk. <clears throat> um, almond and, milk. Almond milk. Yeah. Um, because if it's too strong, I get really bad stomach cramps. But I really love the taste of um coffee with like milk or chocolate. Um, I love mochas. I love uh, dark Your food. <laughs> I love because mochas is how I got started, and I love uh, dark chocolate covered coffee beans. I wish I could tolerate coffee because I think I would like uh, those kind of things, the uh, mochas, mochas and stuff. But I just well, I, do you ever want to take a sip of my chocolate um, with the vanilla coffee? Oh, I have it really diluted. Um, but this is it's part of the reason why I tend to prefer, prefer darker teas. It has a little bit more of that stronger taste that coffee has um and i don't tend to every once in a while i want sweet tea but i don't tend to go for the really sweet ones and this one always gives me a feeling of kind of like minty are you gonna chase this one which one is that again chocolate mint oh mint like cookies yep. it's the one i had yesterday yep. which and this one is good um uh -huh. But a lot of times my tea doesn't smell this sweet. This is good. I think I have this actually. You do. You see, I actually like this one better. I don't. I like them about the same. And this is what I wanted this morning. Yeah. Um, I like a chocolate tea, but nine times out of ten, I'm not going to go for a dessert tea. I'm going to go with something with black tea in it that's a little, a little bit more of a... I like the dessert it. tea, but it doesn't always have to be chocolate. I love my... Um, Butter shortbread. And you also and vanilla sugar cookie. like, I don't know if it counts as a desserty, the blood orange one. Mm -hmm. That one's really good. And actually. maple chai. You see, maple chai, I might have to give you my maple chai because I'm mm. actually not terribly fond of it. I like that. I have um, to try that with the almond milk. Uh, uh, that'd probably be really good with the almond mm -hmm. milk, Mom. Yeah, because uh, it's just not my kind of tea, I don't think. Mm -hmm. Well, it's like some of the ones I gave you. I like things with mint and I like things with black tea, but I tend to prefer just a little bit more on the stronger end and less on the sweet end. Mm -hmm. Although I do like things with corn flour. We overlap a little bit, but mm -hmm. we have our definite differences. Okay. Which is great because that means if one of us doesn't care for a tea, the chances are the other person will like mm -hmm. it. So it's win-win. I gave her a tea and now I'm not sure I should have given it to her. <laughs> it was good, right? <laughs> yeah. It actually tastes like a chai. Oh, I don't think so. You said as much. When I let you taste it, it tasted a little chai -y. Maybe a little, but not. Hmm. Okay, moving on. <clears throat> Excuse me, the old tea. Mm. Moving into, we're going to be starting opening up in terms of being able to go places. Mm -hmm. So I might be talking more about the charities and stuff as I, you know, mm -hmm. able to get them more. Touch base with Laura Gavis over at our local yarn store in um, Winchester talk to the pregnancy center here in town and that kind of stuff so we can do more of that not just have it sitting in a box all the time yeah she so, should be getting um started up <clears throat> pretty soon if yeah she isn't already yeah I, well i think she's probably going to wait for the governor's thing to come through mm -hmm. so okay so let's see what we got here the christmas all year long uh cal cal Lal 2021 excuse me started january 1st 2020 and uh, 2021 and goes through to the end uh, midnight of uh, Jan of uh, December thirty first, going into January first. So. Oh, we forgot to see where our snack was. Oh, I had a stroop waffle. What kind did you have? The cinnamon whatever. And I had the lemon uh, bar. You don't, you don't have any lemon bar. I don't right? think I have any lemon ones left. I'll have to give you some because you gave me some. Um, but I think did you switch back by giving me some caramel. No, you were just being nice and giving me some lemon bar because I ran out. And I was oh, waiting for some to fun. come in. I might have given you. What I gave you is my remainder of my ones that I called the pumpkin ones. You They're did? the spiced. I okay. Think, I think I gave you some of those. Okay. I well, can't remember. I'm not, I don't Too long ago. I don't remember. I can't remember yesterday. A little that far back. Too long All right. ago. <clears throat> All right. Oh, speaking of long ago, just this is just kind of a throw off comment. My great aunt Paula just celebrated her 100th birthday the day after Davina's birthday. So we were really excited about that. That's just awesome. She said, I'm the first person on our side of the family to hit 100. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, okay, moving along. The Christmas all year long 
Cal Cal Lal 2021 started January 1st of this year, goes through December 31st Eastern Standard Time leading into 2022. So if January hits on 2022, it's done. But if the thread happens to still be open for a couple hours, you can slide something in, yes. okay? But don't don't depend on that. Yeah, because, because you might miss your chance. Because especially you people who are not on the East Coast, mm -hmm. because you guys um, are like three, two to three hours behind us. Right. So you might be disappointed. So right. yeah. So don't don't wait. Put things in as, as soon as you can. Whereas people who are overseas, who had the day turn over a little early, mm -hmm. they um, get a few. Extra. They get a few extra hours. So well, what if you're in Australia? Australia is like fifteen hours. Or are they ahead of us? or Are they behind us? I think they're ahead of us. So they'll be like, yeah, I got a whole day Half almost. a day, yeah, yeah. Okay. If we have anyone from Australia. We, do, we, we do. do. We used to. I don't know if we still do. I don't know. If we had a couple from Australia. Okay, I couldn't remember. That. And I know that one of them is in Malaysia, so that's Yeah, I don't know what the hour... Uh, the, the, it's about the same. It's about the same. Yeah. Um, okay. So anyway, this is going all year. We've already pulled for the first quarter prizes, and these are the rules. As I said, January 1st through December 31st, the projects must be knit, luminate, or crocheted. Previous whips are allowed, but must be worked on during the along. Chatter and pictures are on the same thread. One whip per project per week. For those of you who are new, a whip is a work in progress. Post the FO whenever it's completed, and that is a finished object. Um, prizes will, uh, we do have prizes that I've been announcing them as be, you know, as we have the quarter by quarter. I showed them all at the beginning, and now I'm just kind of saying what we have for the mm -hmm. quarter. Any FOs in Franciscan Gypsies designs, uh, patterns, my Lady for Nicole Creations yarn or my shawl pattern or Lollipop Girl yarns or Laura Concert designs will be eligible for two chances at a prize as long as they meet the criteria, okay? And if you have an FO that has both a featured yarn and a featured pattern and it meets all the criteria, then that's three chances at a prize. For your multiple postings, you have to do yourself, okay? It's only for the FO. The hashtag is PHN, hashtag PHN Christmas All Year 2021 on Instagram. If an FO uses 50 yards or less, please post with another FO of 50 yards or more. And you guys have been great about that. Yeah. And our moderators are on top of that as well because we have been a little bit absent, um, you know, from the threads. I've tried to keep up a little better um, and hope to be a little more active now that as things get a little bit back to normal. For some reason, being out of the house, I think, is going to give me the impetus to to get things done because, okay, I have to do this here and I have to do this well, here. it's one of those things that I noticed when I was, when we had a slow day at work, I actually had to work harder to get the same amount of mm -hmm. work done because when you're busy, you are like, okay, I only have a certain amount of time to get this stuff mm -hmm. done, so you're more efficient. Whereas and you're focused. When you're focused, whereas when you have all this time, or you feel like you have all this time, you struggle to keep up because you just keep in your head like, oh, I have time. I have time. And I tried setting artificial schedules. It doesn't really work very well for me. <laughs> and, and, you know, it's just, but anyway, um, Operation Christmas Child or any projects going to Christmas donations is eligible, eligible for two chances at a prize as well as the Pregnancy Center, okay? And pr for those of you who don't celebrate Christmas, wanted to make sure you didn't get left out of this. Projects that are made in predominantly Christmas colors are allowed as well, and these um, are arbitrarily chosen by us. The colors being um, Christmas colors, shades of red, blue, green, silver, gold, purple, pink, and white, okay? So you've got a large array of colors mm -hmm. there, okay? And uh, when we do say gold, we mean gold, not yellow, okay? And, uh, you know, silver is a little more difficult to separate from gray, but we're yeah. talking about silver there, okay? Um, let's see here. The prizes for this quarter, we have a pink cotton yard from Cloudborn and a little bag that goes goes with it. Okay, that's one prize. And then uh, the second prize is Plymouth Yard. It's it's three skeins, and I don't know if it's a, it's it's called Galloway. I don't know if that's the colorway or if it's the base. It apparently has blue stripes because that's what I have on my notes. <laughs> so um, that's the other prize for that. Okay. Autism Awareness 2021 is going strong. We have. We're almost finished with the second month. We have about a week and week and a half, maybe left in May. Yes, yeah, something, like something like that. So, um, and then we have all of June before we are finished with autism awareness. And this is just to foster awareness and kind of thinking about 
people on the spectrum, you know. Mm -hmm. It's okay to be different is what we usually call this because pe they're often misunderstood because, like, like dysautonomia and stuff, even though it might have a little more um, visible effects, they don't understand why people a lot of times. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people sometimes it's like, why can't you keep your child under better control mm -hmm. or whatever? I think it's only when... Although this still looks now, but I think there's a, uh, actually there has been I think with um, movies and stuff and right. TV shows a little bit more awareness of what someone might look like when they're older mm -hmm. and have issues. Um, like they'd had Monk and Alphas both had uh, really good representations. representations. Monk was not actually autistic. I don't think. I think he was OCD. Yeah, OC? he he was OCD. Yeah, uh, uh, but he, he had OCD. Yeah, um, uh, but. The kid in Alphas was a really good representation, was a good representation. of a high-functioning. Yes. And I think, oddly enough, that the kid from Big Bang is supposed to be uh, Asperger's. The, um, I think he's just rude. No, I, th I, think he, I think I remember, and I'm not sure, maybe somebody knows, but I think he was meant to be on the spectrum. Mm -hmm. So a brilliant on the spectrum. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering, though, if he doesn't necessarily fall under autism, but if he falls under more of the um, social... Well, you have to understand, though, when they did the yeah, show, they did it. it was based on what they knew. Yeah. Okay? Because he doesn't seem to have some of the other behaviors. I don't know. From it, what I've seen. Well, it's a spectrum disorder. So, yeah. Uh -huh. But the, the point is that they were, they've been trying to incorporate that. But that doesn't stop people. You know, sometimes we catch people, and I have to make sure that Vina isn't here, um, like staring at Vina, even mm -hmm. in places like church. Yeah, usually it's kids. Usually, but not always. Yeah. Which is um, kind of... But I think that TV has done a fairly good job of making... Because... It, as you get older, it's more noticeable. Yeah, yeah it is. If, if you're... Um, well, another one that I did was the movie um, with Dustin Hoffman and Tom and that's, I was thinking that I couldn't remember I can't think the of the name. name of it it's because Dustin, they showed it in uh, nursing school. Yeah. Dustin Hoffman and Tom Cruise did a fabulous job in that. And I didn't see the whole movie. I just showed the one section where he's uh, perseverating over something. Yeah. And Tom Cruise is trying to get him to focus. And he keeps perseverating over this one thing. And I can't remember what He it. used to do... Like, he could memorize like the whole mm -hmm. phone... You know, pages and pages of the phone book and it was an interesting um, but it was like he was worried about something or focused on something. I think it was flying he didn't want to go to New York with maybe him. it was something like that I can't remember but Tom Cruise is trying to talk him talk to him and he just couldn't well it took Tom Cruise's girlfriend to get him to I think it was Tom Cruise's girlfriend I don't remember the movie very I, well I didn't actually see the whole movie I, I, so. I think I saw it but um I think there's a lot of swearing in it yeah I think so and I didn't I don't know if I watched all of it but I seem to remember there was an outside influence because Tom Cruise is a businessman he was very Mm -hmm. And very impatient with him. Yeah, and I think there was all it was a, an age gap too. In spite of because it was all from what I gather, it was almost like a similar thing for Davina and I. The, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Tom, Tom Cruise was the younger brother. Yeah, yeah. But it was it was a good representation because you know. T uh, say what you want about Dustin Hoffman. You like him. You don't like him. He does his research. And he gets into and his role. Into his role. And um, he gets into his role. They showed that as an excellent example. for. Um, he, yeah, he was spot on. So that was something. That was, I think, done in the 90s. No, I think it was. It might have been late '80s. Okay, I wasn't sure. Early '80s. They um, were both it, hot at that time. Yeah, because it was during that time period. It was before Mission Impossible. Mm -hmm. Um, it, but it was during that time period where Tom Cruise was doing all the hot shot mm -hmm. role. You yeah. know, he's hot shot pilot. He's a right. hot shot. Yeah. You know, whatever. Cocktail, all that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so he, yeah. So that I thought that was a really good representation. But we still, you know, awareness still needs to be fostered. Awareness still needs yeah. to be fostered, but. That is something that movies have been doing a fairly good job of representing. So, you know, people are maybe a little bit more aware. So if you aren't aware yet, yeah, check out. Um, I, wouldn't rec I, I would recommend early Alphas because I, I haven't yeah. watched any of the later yeah. ones. And yeah. there are things to be concerned about, which is why we stopped it. Right. Uh, we stopped watching Alphas after a while. I do have the set, but I haven't gone through all the way. But uh, there's um, a couple of episodes The kid's name is Gary and mm -hmm. he does an excellent job. Mm -hmm. He's actually British and you can't tell. Yeah. He's one of those guys who really does a good job hiding that. He, he, that's a really good, watch early that with the, the caveat that it's, you know, you got to be careful yeah. what you're watching. And then the same thing with the one with Tom Cruise and Dustin Hoffman. Be careful because if you don't like language and stuff like that, it, it's got language. Because Gary in Alpha does a uh, very good job of, he actually, he, he and Davina's behaviors can be very mm -hmm. similar. There's mm -hmm. a point well, first of all, there's a uh, completely side, uh, slightly off is his obsession with driving. Right. Um, and I drive. No, you don't drive. <laughs> you know, the, the, uh, I think the the hot girl got in trouble for leaving him in the car one time. 
No, it was the other girl. Was the, I, didn't the think she, girl. I didn't think she would be the one to do they it. They were looking for somebody. She had to leave him to go look for something. Oh, okay. She didn't want to, and she made us stay in the back, and then he got in trouble with the cop because he said, I can't drive. Oh, okay. Um, but okay. Cause I was the, 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 the really funny part about that one that yes. we always like is he put his lunch bag with his name on his it. His mom puts his name on it. Yeah, in, in, in the fridge. And the there's a very good relationship with this guy who's a cop, I think. He, I think he was a former cop. I think his anger issues. Yeah, he had anger a, issues. Oh, yeah, got him out of But it. anyway, he also has abilities, which is yeah. why he's there. Mm-hmm. But anyway, he said, don't touch it. It's my lunch. And he said, well, maybe my name is Gary. Said, no, I'm Gary. And the whole thing, it was absolutely spot on. I because see. it's actually been some, a very similar conversation mm-hmm. Dad and Davina have had. Mm-hmm. Which, uh, a part of him... Or a part of him, Gary in this case, or part of her, Davina, will kind of know that you're joking, but mm-hmm. a part of them really takes you seriously. Yeah, it's hard to get the humor. You know? Yes, um, it's a subtlety. And mm-hmm. I thought that even just that alone was, the kid did a really good job. And so I would recommend that for at least seeing the guy who plays Gary, at least in the first season, because we didn't yeah. see past that, his representation because it's really a good job. He did, yeah, he did a fantastic it, job. He didn't just do what a lot of shows will do, is where they associate Asperger's with just not being socially adept, mm-hmm. and they only focus on that part, so they try, they go more for the funny... Um, well, they, they hit all the areas, because there were, I think it was one episode where he kind of... Yes, he did, yeah. he did. Uh, whereas a lot of shows, and I'm going to pick on Big Bang... Be, they will go for the dirty humor, right. the just being clueless mm-hmm. kind of stuff, but they do it in such a way that doesn't really feel genuine. Mm-hmm. It feels just that you're giving your character an excuse to be a jerk. <laughs> I had a stronger word than I was thinking. But, <laughs> but, but so I guess this autism awareness moment is brought to you by Autism in the Media. Yes. So, so um, I would I'll recommend... S- that in, in case you haven't. What is the name of that movie? With the Dustin Hoffman oh, and gosh, Tom it was, Cruise. I have to look it up because it's like sitting right here. Yeah. Well, uh, you do that so I can do the message. I, can, now, I, I have um, no. You. You. No. I have, I, I have a question for you. Okay. Um, box of chocolates. I didn't actually. Um, no, box of chocolate is um. Is that no, I know it's a different movie. Forrest but, Gump. But what would you? I didn't see Forrest um, Gump. How, what, how would you? I. I don't know that he's Asperger's. I think he's probably more like slow. Uh, you know, he's in, developmentally delayed. Developmentally delayed. Developmentally okay. delayed. And innocent. Completely and utterly innocent. I didn't see the movie, mm-hmm. so I don't know. And Tom Hanks did a good job with that role. It's probably one of the few roles I actually really like him in, mm-hmm. is Forrest Gump. He's got a big heart, a good heart. He knows what's right and wrong, but he's very, very simple. I mean, when he's in that war situation, he remembers what that girl said: "Run, Forrest, run." Mm-hmm. You know. Well, I've heard that line before. Yeah. So, yeah, that I think I don't think that's I would I would think it might be a stretch to be Asperger's. Okay, because I don't I, like I said I didn't see it, mm-hmm. so I don't know which is why I wanted to ask. And it's you. been so long since I've seen it, I, I can't really tell you. But anyway, oh, me, I found the movie. Okay. Uh, Rain Man. Rain Man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it was 1988. Okay. I thought it was late 80s. Yeah. Uh-huh. I couldn't remember. I thought it was 80s, but I was like, that can't be right. And I said 90s. So, um, anyway, let me go through the rules for this because we went off on the other stuff first. All right, so this goes to the end of June. Tag your projects, hashtag PHNAA21 on in- Instagram. Our co host is Laura Concert, who's crocheting Hoovian. She always does this with us. We're always happy to have her with us. Um, See the pro- the rules are basically the same as all of our alongs, except that this one has bright colors and the color blue. Okay, those are autism colors, Asperger colors. That's what we are accepting as eligible for a double chance at a prize for the FO. If you use my yarn, my pattern, Taya's yarn, I tie my yarn, my pattern, Taya's yarn, Laura's yarn. I don't pattern, have yarn. Laura's yarn or pattern, the braided bright. By George, who's 10 hours And Tully's pattern's not Tully's yarn. Shush. Well, you said Tully's yarn. I was okay. clarifying. Okay. I have to start again now. Okay. Sorry. All but right. It was confusing. Stop. Okay. Lady for Co Creations yarn and my one pattern. Yes. Laura Concert's yarn and, and patterns. Yes. Talia's pattern, yes. Braided Bright by George, who's 10 hours or less, and um, Miss World, who's now Modest Creation. Yeah, I think her it's weighted, modest ba- creation. Her weighted mm-hmm. lap gan and bear pattern. 
those are all for the finished object they're all eligible for two chance at a prize and if you use my yarn or Laura's yarn in the featured pattern together then that is three chance at a prize for the FO only um, you're responsible for your own multiple postings they have to meet all the requirements okay and a quick note all of the designers mentioned are available in not just on Ravelry mm -hmm. but in multiple places I know that I think Laura's on Laura's on Etsy Etsy and so I think she's, is she's also on um, Lovecraft Lovecraft okay I wasn't sure I know a lot of creation is Etsy. on Etsy mm -hmm. and then George has his own site yeah George is 10 hours I think it's 10 hours or it's, less I dot think, com yeah I think so so um, yeah if you go there and buy something tell him we sent you so he doesn't yeah. so he knows we didn't forget it because I, I think that we kind of lost track of yeah it. we did because yeah. uh, you know life I, happened yeah and so you know just I'd like him to know that we're still thinking about him. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So if you do it, just sound, hey, yeah, we we heard about you from Panic and Needles. I keep mentioning you. Okay. All right. Um, he's amazing. Absolutely yeah, he amazing. Is. First right. baby blanket I ever knit was one of his. Mm -hmm. He tends to do the multiple strands, but mm -hmm. oh my gosh, that baby blanket turned out amazing. And he is, he's one of those designers. I mean, he, he's a fairly fairly well-known designer I, I, would, so, I like yeah. to think I mean he, he did stuff with Crassy before they went under the last time mm -hmm. I don't know if he's still doing it but um, and with Cloudborn and all that kind of stuff so he was he's really doing a lot of stuff and when we were coming out I think I don't think he um, was a newbie at that time but he was fairly established mm -hmm. and he took the time with our baby podcast to design for us to help us with things she helped, helped tie with her learning how to write patterns yeah yeah he uh, uh proofread my very first pattern absolutely a fabulous individual and he's very talented okay um i already went through and all there was this. absolutely no benefit to him for a new designer entering. absolutely not <laughs> okay the, the one prize that i know for sure for this was um donated by the very very wonderful and generous looney hiker who is pat she has donated one of any of her patterns to the winner the one of her one of the uh, winners choice okay so she's got some wonderful patterns out there i'm hoping that the socks are available because i think the people would like her socks yeah what's it got some neuropathy uh, every once in a while i get sharp pains it's not in any place that may, makes sense for knitting right it's just like right here at the bend of my mm. um mm. i'm not i'm sure it's probably an eds thing right um but it I don't know why. I feel like if I move it, it's going to help, and I don't think it well, actually does anything. But it makes you feel better. <laughs> so thank you, Pat, for your wonderful donation. I have uh, a few prizes that have been donated that we haven't assigned yet, and those will come in here and other places. Now, this next one, and boy, we're really pushing slow stuff Well, here. we started uh, late. We didn't start till 11. No, I mean, I'm looking at the time. Oh, that's normal. Uh, comfort along. This is Wombat of Doom and B-Wing. That's Patty and Brittany, respectively. Now, this is their baby. We're just giving them the platform. But as we have said multiple times, we are absolutely wholeheartedly behind this. Brittany is very charity-oriented, and I think it's great that Patty and she are doing this mm -hmm. on our platform. Okay, this is the first and possibly annual Comfort, comfort Along. And uh, the main purpose of this is to make specific items for donations to comforting crafts that's Brittany Brittany is wonderful what she does in this kind of stuff her her charity for she does hats she does dishcloths she does scarves and it, you she'll let you know what she needs mm -hmm. I mean she's got a, a pretty good size operation going so that's good uh, this along goes from March 1st 2021 through midnight June 30th 2021 Eastern Standard Time so that means July 1st it's done okay so again, all of you guys who are not East Coasters, keep an eye on the time yes. so you get everything in, okay? No previous whips are allowed on this. And I'm reading these rules because they're their rules, not ours, okay? They're similar to our rules, but I want to make sure I get them correct. Items, items that are eligible for the comfort along can be knitted, crocheted, or loom knit. Specific items, they are concentrating on dishcloths and washcloths and hats. Specifically hats... Uh, well, young children through adult, and specifically, there's a greater need for boys' colors or gender neutrals, so please keep that in mind. Um, patterns like the Fits the Whole Fam hat by Cozy Up Knits are perfect since they're so stretchy and they are suitable for many sizes. I guess my understanding is that you can only make the one size and it fits like everybody. Yeah, it sounds like. Okay, chatter and pictures will all be in the same thread, one whip per project per week, the FO, whenever it's completed. If you are also in the Comforting Crafts Facebook group, Please feel free to post your pictures there. Okay, so th there is a thread in our group for this, and there's a thread um, on Facebook. I guess that's what you call it, a thread over there, or you just post pictures. Yeah, I'm group, not sure. I guess. I don't know how that works. But anyway, 
probably a page or a group. The prizes will be chosen from the thread in our group, okay? So prizes will be randomly chosen by the random number generator, our, no our normal way of doing it, when the time comes. And so far, the prizes are as follows. Two skeins of dishy yarn, dishcloth pattern booklets, and handmade greeting cards by Beanwing. And as I said last time, that's a real prize. It's awesome. They're all real prizes, but that's an amazing prize, okay? She's talented with that. Um, we also have a skein of my yarn, and we have uh, one of Taya's um, Tortoise versus Hair pattern books. So that's good, too. That's excellent, okay? And lots of fun things to win. And I'll have to get in touch with either Patty or Brittany and find out how many prizes we have all together as we get closer to that date. Yeah. Um, please contact Brittany for the mailing address because we don't want to put her address all over the Internet. And the hashtag for Instagram will be hashtag PHN Comfort Along 2021. All right. So 30 minutes and we are ready to get into projects. Okay. And you go first because you have an FO where I don't. Let's see. And we have equal projects. Okay. My first one is in my Mickey Mouse um, Cloverbird bag. And this is my spoiled money stomp little scarf, cowl, whatever. I'm not sure what it's going to be yet. <laughs> um, and I just, it's test yarns, test designer yarns. And I don't know what the colorway is. And I, I did a couple of rows on the podcast the other day. I mean, the other time we were here. I do really like the way it's the zigzagging when you do it sideways. Mm -hmm. um, it breaks up the color really nice. I'm not a big variegated person. I really have to have something that breaks it up. Well, that's what, Cerebell's good for that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's... I'll have to say about that. Don't get too settled in crocheting that because I'm just showing it back. In my Silver Shed USA Peanuts Christmas bag is the Davina's Christmas stocking pattern that I'm still designing. So okay. I'm, a, I'm basically focusing on one design at a time this year. Right. Okay. My next one is in my... And this one actually Talia can claim a little credit on as well because she tinked it back for me. Um, this is in my... Uh, Knitting Magic, Knitting Magic, Large Lavender Flowers on a Dark Field Bag. It's my Welcome Little One project from the On the Porch Blanket Knitting Pattern by 5410 Studio. Um, I really want to finish this. You, nor you know, normally when I hit a snag on one of their blankets, I love their patterns, but I just get bored with knitting pattern, knitting blankets. Mm -hmm. um, I usually will rip it back. I really want to finish this blanket. Right. So Talia picked up stitches for me and got me to a point where I did because I couldn't live with the mistake anymore mm -hmm. it just it was confusing me so I'm not quite where I was before I'm in the middle of a row here I think I'm in the middle of, yeah I am but you can see that I'm a little less uh advanced than I was before but there's no error now and what happened was the way it was written up I was not getting the um dividing ridge mm -hmm. because it wasn't written properly with a break. She didn't write properly in her notebook. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't want them to think the yeah. pattern was yeah. written wrongly. In fact, what I did was, because of the way I had it written before, so I would see what I was doing, you can see there's a, I don't know if you can see, there's a space where that hole is, and I got confused and thought I had two rows of columns. Mm. So what I did this time is I'd put it here, like this. So yeah. there's no, there's no uh, ambiguity. I see exactly what I'm supposed to do. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised that you didn't do what you normally do, which is you type it up. I don't usually with this kind. Okay. Because it's just, it's the same thing, just repeat it, repeat it, repeat oh, it. Oh, okay. I just, I'm just trying to keep track of the number. Oh, okay. Because I can actually look at this and see what I'm doing. I just need to know the oh, number. Oh, that's good. It, because it's just a very, very simple repeat. Something I really like about 5410 is that they look nice, but they're simple. Mm-hmm. And you can't go wrong with one of their, their blanket patterns. They have, like I said, I just don't like knitting blankets because they take so long. But if I'm using a bulky yarn, I'm, I'm like more likely to finish it. Right. So. Okay, so that leads on to me next. Let me take a look at my show notes. I'm going to try to do things in order so I actually know what I've spoken about and when I haven't. Of what you spoke? Let's of see. which you spoke? Okay, the first one is in my Silver Shed USA 
bat signal bag. And this is Puget Sound. It is the Fundamental Men's Pullover by um, Jen Hagen. And I'm still um, leading up to the shoulders because, like I said before, this isn't a drop. This isn't a... Um, a raglan? A raglan. This is... Um, it's a higher shoulder. And so um, it's going to be a deeper... Um, area that I need for the arm mm. not to mention it's for a guy not for me so it's also again deeper but it, it's making progress I'm not terribly far from needing to do uh, just sh shape the last part of the shoulders and put um, this on waist yarn and then I can go ahead and start the back I mean the front so do you prefer waist yarn to putting like uh, a cable or yeah definitely why uh, simply because it's less bulky. But wouldn't that keep it more open for you to be able to pick it up afterwards? It's not a problem. Picking up's not hard. I'll probably mess it up. It's not hard. You overcomplicate things. Not in fact. Hey, you do it. You, it's easy. Uh, for super, you, it's super easy. Barely an inconvenience. For you. Just because it's easy for you doesn't mean it's easy for everybody. Okay, let me see here. And actually, be because you don't watch all the YouTube facile. I do, you don't know that it's a reference, so. C'est facile. There is a, um, the guy does, um, he calls them pitch meetings. Uh, it's a skit he does. Mm -hmm. They're called pitch meetings, for, and he does it for different movies and TV shows, and he, it's, it's talking to himself. He, he plays two different people, mm -hmm. and he, he goes back and forth this conversation. Right. And one guy is the guy wanting to produce the movie. The other guy is the guy pitching the movie. And they do it in such a way they're actually mocking the movie. Um, but he'll be like, well, that's really weird. Why would you do that? Because money. Oh, I like money. And he asks him, like, how do you get the characters out of the situation? It'd be super easy, barely an inconvenience. And it's so whenever somebody, whenever um, I have a reason to think of something being super easy, I want to add. Barely an inconvenience at the end. Okay. Let's see here. <sighs> Ryan George. But that it's called pitch meetings. Oh, tea here. Uh, my tea's almost gone. Who knows? Mm. This is the tea that I take if I run out of a packet. I just bought some, I think, so I don't have to worry too much. But um, I run out of a packet. If I get below like one or two, I have to go back and get more because mm -hmm. I need to have this. This one right now is the one that I need to have in my tea stash because it's where I go when I... <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, that's a bit dramatic. <laughs> true. Very true. It, it, very I guess because I like it, but I, didn't, I don't find it that. Because mm. it's not... I'm not, I don't tend as sweet as you mm. do for tea. Well, I the thing with me is, is that it changes from it, time to time. It will do that, yeah. <clears throat> okay, my next one is in my Silver Shed USA Black and Blue Star Wars bag. This is by the lovely Aunt Brody. And this is my On the Garden Path scarf. Probably scarf, I don't know what it's going to be. And I, I only worked on this on the podcast, honestly. This is the only reason I have as many projects, because I sat here and did projects while we're on the podcast, and then I had other things going on during the week, so I didn't have a whole lot of time to do a whole lot of projects. Renna was proud of you for remembering not to stay on the fourth floor. Who was? Renna. Oh, what'd you say that? Uh, this morning. I think it was Renna. This morning? Mm-hmm. Right. I didn't see it. Well, you might not have. I get notifications um, on YouTube. Okay. Yeah, it was Rena. <laughs> so I, I must not have answered her. Yeah, yeah, it was early this morning. Okay. So I have to remember to at least put down that she was there because um, if I didn't see that, I might not have seen her comment. So, yeah, this, <clears throat> this is James C. Brett. And I do like this yarn. It's one of the few acrylics. That I really I can I can work with and it's not a, an issue, and it's bulky and it actually it's chunky and it has a, amazing yard. It's like three hundred and some odd yards of chunky yarn. It just doesn't happen, you know. So I'm going to use as much of the yarn as I can for this scarf, and go from there. Okay, so hot. Um, next is for me. Oh, is this one? So I'm going to talk about it and get to the end of my needle. So in my Silver Shed USA, um, oops, is a bunny bag. Mm -hmm. I already have my liquid for that. 
I just preempted it. <laughs> um, is I call them my Royal House socks, and this is the Dance All Night uh, socks pattern. Um, and these are the ones that I knit for. I knit a different pair for Mom recently. But when I had those on needles, I cast this on for myself. And I probably will have at some point, mostly have one of these on the needles. Because both Mom and I like this kind of sock. Because it's it's warm and it rolls down nicely. I probably won't wear it too much until I hit fall again. Yeah, because right now it's it, too hot. Um, now, I have a problem where I'm either very hot mm -hmm. or I'm freezing. Mm -hmm. So, I like to have these available. Um, and the two pairs that I had originally knit in the knit for these, I when I was on an older knitting sock trend, I put holes in it because I was wearing socks and shoes at that point. These right. socks and shoes. Yeah, I don't, I don't like to wear my homemade socks, handmade socks and shoes. Yeah, so I, I tend to just wear my home, handmade mm -hmm. socks around the house. Not to mention I don't go anywhere anymore. So, right. not really. Uh -huh. But uh, so this is my pair. This is some. Um, Mad Tosh, I think it was a, these were one of a kinds. They're really pretty. Um, because I got, I took a chance on them. They had you could. This is back when I had money. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was working, and I uh, went ahead and took a chance on a um, surprise me box of their worst in a surprise me box of their DK, and I don't regret it. Um. It's really nice. I don't wear uh, this kind of purple, but I really... It's hard to regret anything from Mad Tosh. <laughs> I mean, look at that depth. It's beautiful. I don't know if it's coming across very nicely, but it's beautiful. Um, and actually, this is the first time I think I've knit this pair of socks. It's something that's not a hugely variegated yarn. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, cause you did mine in Mad Hatter and in Funny Papers. Um, I did a pair for myself in Mad Hatter and then the Batman Superman It sock. was Mad Hatter, right? Oh, yes, it was. Okay, cause I know there are two colors that were kind of no, similar. No, I had Mad Hatter. Okay. Um, so Funny Papers and Mad Hatter for you. Mm -hmm. I destroyed my Mad Hatter socks. And I destroyed my Batman Superman socks. Mm -hmm. So um, these will not be destroyed. These will be treated with more kindness. <laughs> mean to her socks. So, yes, that is for me. I need to measure because I'm getting close to the heel flap. Oh, and I am at the heel flap point. Very cool. I thought I was close. Okay. Um, my next one is my comfy cozy shawl from the scrap shawl pattern by Anastasia Zettel. I'm gonna put tie, let me borrow her shawl. So I don't feel like wearing a sweater because it's too hot. But this without it's too cold. <laughs> so um, okay, my plover pink and purple tea cuts bag. This is this bag here? Um, I, did, I think I did a fair amount of work on this. Did I? I had my doctor appointment this week or last week. Oh, I can't remember, Mom. I can't remember. I was trying to think if I did the, worked on this there or not. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I honestly can't remember. I worked. Oh no, it was it had? I had a picture on for Instagram. It must have been last week. Um, so yeah, I did a little bit on this. You were right. I think. Well, I can't remember. Yeah, because I came in for my blood test this week. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what it was. I didn't really have time to work on my stuff there. So this is, I did the hat. Can you see? Um, I think that after this particular row, I'm going to change color again. Um, maybe the variegated, I haven't decided. But yeah, that's where it's, it's, you can tell how much this grows. I mean, I can already wear it almost, almost as a shorty shawl. This is the one that I always said to Ty when I was working on it. Not this particular one, but anytime I do this, it gets to a point where it looks like, okay, this is a shawl for a doll. Right, a bar, right. Because it's got the shape already. And it's just really, really nice to work with. I can find where my where my loop is. My Where's my... I had it marked. There it is. I thought it was open. I thought I'd lost it. And I was, oh, no, I hate it when that happens. Although, with this, at least I know where I'm at, and I can just pick it up. Mm-hmm because I'm not really following the pattern at this point. I won't need to follow the pattern until I um, get to the point where I have to start doing the edging. But this is how much I have left of the color I'm working on right now. And because 
it's such a big stitch. I should use a fair amount of it. Mm -hmm. So that's put that up here. Alrighty. So let me just read my quick note change. Okay. I'll start actually working on this after. Okay. So my next one is. Just need to scroll down my notes. Okay, I barely worked on this one, but I wanted to get a little work on it because I haven't worked on it in a while. Um, I needed I need to work on some of my uh, Joanne Johnson. I just haven't had a lot of focus for my uh, yellow sweater. This is right. a Joanne Johnson, but I haven't had the focus for my yellow sweater. Right. Um, but this is The Walking to Town. And I'm actually tempted when this one's done to do maybe this or something similar to it. And all that, I have that Verdant Griffin brownie gold yarn. Right. Well, that's what I'm doing mine in. Yep. Yeah, um, but not Vernon Griffin, but No. Yeah. Either that or look for a poncho. Mm -hmm. um, because I have, I don't have quite enough for sweaters worth, but way too much to do like one of these Thorin scouts. Mm -hmm. So this is Walking Town. This uses up the last of my airport hot sauce. Now that I realize that you've done a red, I'm glad I'm uh, not going to do my uh, other shawl that I want to do in a red. Although maybe I will still. I don't know. I haven't decided. Yeah, why, why not do one in a red? Uh -huh. But yeah, this is airport hot sauce. And did a few rows on it. Um, didn't get a terrible amount of attention, just got some. I think I just wanted to make sure I got a little bit of work on it because it's been ignored. I have a sweater, I need to do that too. Well. <laughs> a couple sweaters, I need to do that too. Okay, let me see here. I tend to focus on one project. Well, I'm not like one project, but like focus. I might have five sweaters, but I focus on like one or two. Right. Well, you, you work on what you, excuse me, I got chill. Uh, what you feel like working on. Okay, my next one is in my Kikiboo bag, Kikiboo Owls holiday bag. And this is my Monkey Brain Preemie hat. Okay, it's on the Cindy Wood, Cindy Wood Loom. And it's a uh, cotton yarn, actually. Can you see that? I don't think you can. Um, it's this color. And it's going to be not real stretchy, so the baby's going to have to be a little bit, a very small baby preemie. And it, the colorway is actually, it's, I love this cotton in the sock monkey. I think, oh, I can't find the colorway on it. Anyway, it's this color. And, you know, hopefully I'll finish that relatively quickly. That takes care of that. I will return. Okay, okay. So, next for me is in my um, Plover Bird part is bigger on the inside bag and this pro this bag hasn't carried anything but a Dobbin wood in a very long time speaking of Dobbin even though it doesn't go with what I'm wearing I'm gonna put my Dobbin wood on because I'm a little chilly there we go it's better Okay, so my Dobbin Wood was in TARDIS type colors. I had the black and the white and the zing. And this is all Miss Babs. Mom's is also a Miss Babs. Um, and this is a pattern by KF Jones, Baker Bears Fame. I got to the third color. So let me just take this off so I can show you the back. That means I'm in this section here in the back. So mom decided to go with uh, Miss Babs, I think it's called Inkwell, which is this darker blue. It's a very subtle change. Then you have Zing. And then next for the little pop of color, there's this light blue and I think it's another Miss Babs, but I'm not quite sure. Um, but I'm not very far along in the lace. Uh, I just haven't had the focus for it. I think I did this on Sunday or maybe even last Saturday after the podcast. Um, but my goal over the weekend was to get this second color going. So I was very happy. Or the third color in. So I was very happy when I got it in. And good, she's coming back. I don't have to keep blathering quite as much. Are you having a problem off with I always have a problem waffling. Can you move that, please? Oh, sorry. Um, I was okay. just showing off your 
Oh, goblin land. Oh, goblin land. Uh, Isn't that pretty? Oops. Oops. It's bunny. It's bunny. Uh, Thank you. We yeah, are all with the Dobbin wood. Um, this, no, most of the work was on the weekend just because that was when I had the focus for the lace. Where's my hook? Not this complicated lace. Did you drop it? Oh, there it is. Oops, now I've dropped it. Okay. Oops, it's a bunny. It is a bunny. He. <laughs> Let's get my hook in here. You've made all the bunnies rather upset. Look it over it. Okay. I have a bunny tape measure, bunny mug. And then there's bunnies behind us. Did I, I think I picked that up one time. I, did I get that one from Cracker Barrel? Um, no, I don't think you picked up the bunny one from okay. Cracker Barrel. Because um, we picked up some from Cracker Barrel, and then we also picked some up from our... Local from, yarn star. From what was our local yarn star at the time before it went out of business. I also picked up some from Laura Gavis. I don't think I've had any from Laura Gavis. Okay. Well, I thought I picked one up for you. Um, I don't remember you doing so, but maybe you did, and I just can't remember. Let me just finish this stitch here. But I know I got ones from Cracker Barrel in the other yarn store. Yeah, it was really funny. One time we walked into Cracker Barrel and all these cute little, um, uh, not stitch markers, um, tape measures. Tape measures. Just sitting there and I, it was, it, 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 just, it was kind of like, okay, that's random. Okay. That's cool. I can, I can, I can get behind that. Let me just, let me just throw my yarn back and finish this row there we because go. I would love to finish this. I mean, I can finish this, and it's just going to be another one's going to go on the hook. But yeah, but um, you would just have that one finished. I'd have this one, and I do like the way this yarn works up. But it's just, I want to finish it and do something else. <laughs> I get that. Let me get this here. I just like to have one stitch in, so I'm not, uh, you know, just kind of hanging there. All right. Oh, my show notes. Oops, where's my? Oh, there it is. Okay. And this does eat up the yarn fairly quickly. Oh, it's crochet. Kind of like the scrap shawl does because it's a big stitch. Mm -hmm. And because you do more than one stitch in each, you know, for each stitch, it goes, you know, instead of just doing, I'll pull it out of my head, say a half double crochet. Instead of just doing one half double crochet, will cost, you've got like, say, three half double crochets mm -hmm. in each stitch. So you're using more of the yarn. But this is a very large skein. It was, it's still a big skein. Yeah, you're, you but have a while to go if you're I trying have, to use all of it. Yeah. And I might if I leave it as a scarf because then they can just use it as a fashion scarf and wrap it around several times. Yeah. It's a shame you didn't make it uh, deeper like a stole. I've done that. I've, I mean, I've, but you, with this particular one. Why? Well, if there's so much yarn. Well, the one I've got, I'll, they're all Miss Babs. So That's not Miss Babs. This one's Tess, but it's the same yardage. Mm hmm I think that um, this might have a little bit, like 30 yards more, or something mm -hmm. like that. Okay, so that takes care of that one. Let me see. I keep losing my show notes. Um, okay. But that wasn't the one you had to show you, if there's something else to show you. No, right now I have the bag end wrap to show. This is from the Burl Wrap Pattern by K.F. Jones. So another K.F. Jones. Yes. Well, I like K. And this is my Mama C. Large Owl's bag. Yeah, the only reason why she's not making her own album is because because Mom can't doesn't like I, working seed stitch. I don't like working. I love the way it looks. I love the way it feels like on mitts and things like that. I just don't like working it. So I did a little bit of work on this. And I have, honestly, I think not working in seed stitch would have ruined the look. Yeah, I tried it and I just got fed up with it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm making very slow progress with this. Um, you know, but I... You know, I, I've got, all, all it says right, wrong, right, wrong, so you don't know what I'm doing here, but you can see where my X's are. I've still got a ways to go for this particular row. I'm not in a hurry, honestly. I'm enjoying it. It's kind of like, okay, if I sit down, I can do several rows if I want to, or I can sit down and do one row. Mm -hmm. And it's basically, at this point, it's a very simple pattern. I'm looking forward to adding the next color. I'm not sure what the next color is going to be because it's taken me so long to do this. I'm not sure if I had any rhyme or reason to it. But this is really, and I think all my yarn for this is, let me see, is Dragonfly, Fibers Traveler, and Kelpie. Um, I'm not sure if this might have been my, no, you, did you use my um, On the Forest Floor kit for my forest floor? No, you, um, I, I, Built it you from, built it. Yeah. So th I think this might be for my on the floor. Yeah, floor. probably is because mm -hmm. I think Kelpie was in there. It was. Uh, and you wanted, you were still at that point convinced you were going to knit yours. Mm -hmm. So you picked all of these different Miss Babs yarns. Right. Well, and I, 
Because the Berlin was in there. And to be honest with you, I actually started my shawl before you did. You did. And I had gotten quite a, you know, I was really excited because I actually started something before you did. But it just got to the point where I don't know if I got sidetracked or if I started having pain in my hands or whatever. And then I just got, you know. Well, you've also admitted that you don't necessarily like bigger knit projects. Yeah. I mean, I don't mind the shawls. I've done several shawls. Yeah. Um, well, have I? I've done you know, a couple. Actually, I'm I've, not done, sure. I've done the sock knitter. Um, I did um, Lala's, but shawl. it's not like you do your crochet ones. No, well, crochet is my comfort zone. Right, it is your comfort um, zone. You know, and um, if, if my hands are okay, that's your where I'm preference. Go. Is not doesn't seem to be a bigger knit object. No, because it takes forever. And that's probably you probably would have even without the C stitch just because of the size of the dobbin wood. Mm -hmm. You might have. Your my mind have gone bunny. Yeah, I it takes forever to do anything knitted, so I like you know some of the smaller projects more. Like I, you know, I don't mind doing a medium project, but once you get to the big ones, it takes me a lot of. Okay, you need to do this. You need to do this. Not that I don't like it. It's just you need to do this. <laughs> you know, so you want this, really? You do. You do want this. You want the finished object. Let's just give the tie. She can do. <laughs> Okay. Um, your turn. Okay, so yeah, I don't need to take commissions. I get I've got uh, family commissions mm -hmm. <laughs> between Davina and Of course, I mom. give you yarn support for that. Even, you do. You even do. when you make it, I give you yarn support. You do. Um, it's never from my stash. It's either mm -hmm. from your stash or something you died. Yep. Um, okay. The only time I think it ever comes from my stash is if it's a surprise gift kind right. of thing. Um, okay, so next for me. Let me see. Oh. Is um talked about that one. Okay. This one I wanted to work on it more this week and I didn't get around to it. I worked on some of some of it this week. I really am enjoying this one. This is in my brown um knitter's magic bag, soft brown. And this is um Quicksilver sweater. Um and it's Hillcrest Coast by um amy miller for divina and um this i was afraid it'd be too dark to show up but it, i don't think it is i think it's showing up nicely and actually it goes yeah i have the right way it's gonna have a really big collar i'm still wow that's turned pretty yeah i'm I'm getting at the point where I'm almost done with increases for because it, it's top down. Um, I'm almost done with the increases that I need up the top, and then I'll be doing either straight for a while. Or I'll probably be doing putting uh, waist yarn for armholes pretty soon. Um, not quite yet, but not terribly far off because you can see right here is where the shoulder. Right. Um, so. Yeah, it'll ha it has a little cable right by where the zipper will be. It's really it's not a complex pattern, but it's got just enough interest. And I think it will. It's got some shaping. It's got some cables. I think it'll make her happy. I think so. She likes without being as complicated as as much as I love my Vivian, I probably wouldn't knit it again simply because there's a, it's a, it's very complicated with all the charts and stuff. Right. Um, plus the cables rode up the hood. So you had cables going up the hood this way, plus this, like they all met, and there was multiple charts. It was seed stitched throughout. Was that a tin can knits? Mm -mm, that was a Yosal Teak. Beautiful sweater. Absolutely love it. And it had a tapered sleeve. Mm -hmm. It has a tapered sleeve where the cable meets here, and it comes kind of like, you see in those medieval... V's. Like it, it comes in, it V's right about like here. <clears throat> um... Some people complained about the sweater being too, um, having two sleeves too long, but I found it absolutely perfect. I liked having long sleeves. I mean, it's just... And also, it was a look she was going mm -hmm. for. She was going for the long sleeve mm -hmm. V thing, so they were just kind of missing the point. Right. Well, they may have not have looked at the pattern carefully. Yeah. Or, or how it looked on the model. Yeah. You know, sometimes you just say, oh, that's pretty. I want to do it. Mm -hmm. And you don't look at how it fits on the model. Yeah. So yeah. Um, 
And like I said, as much as I love this sweater, probably wouldn't knit it again. So I think that this one's a good, you know, have a little bit of interest going enough to make her happy. Do you think you would do that for yourself? Um, at this time, no. Mm -hmm. um, now, granted, I'm a more experienced knitter than I was at that point. Uh, that was one of my first few sweaters. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was... Well, I cast on all about the same time. Grandpa's sweater, Grandma's sweater, and that sweater. Mm -hmm. So it was one of my first three sweaters, but they were all, like, concurrent. Right. Um, and I was a v very new knitter at the time. So I probably wouldn't find it as challenging now as I did back then. Except for the focus issues. Except for the focus issues, yeah. Um, but I have the skills that I didn't have back then, experience. Uh -huh, because I was a very new knitter. Okay, but that's that's it for this. Okay. I don't tend to re-knit sweaters, though. Mm -hmm. and there's too many good sweater patterns out there. And it's a big project. Mm -hmm. Now, I if I really like something, as evidenced by the uh, scrap shawl... Mm -hmm. Oh, I'll will... re-knit accessories and I'll re-knit shawls, and I've done that Well, both. that that scrap shawl is a good size shawl. Um, now, granted, it is a... Um, crocheted shawl, but still, mm -hmm. it, you know, it takes a lot of yarn, and if I'm going to commit to something that big where I have to buy that much yarn for a crochet project, I better like it, mm -hmm. because, you know, it's just a little pricey and a little time-consuming. Well, also, with sweaters, I feel, like, for shawls, it's like you find something that you really like, and you mm -hmm. tend to stick with it, and I mm -hmm. feel like some success, accessories the same way. With sweaters, I feel like, for some reason, there's so many... There's so much variety out mm -hmm. there. I know there's a variety for shawls, but, you know, you figure out that you like a certain amount of coverage. Right. And I think for shawls, sometimes people can tend to be like, yeah, I like that kind. You like that kind? Or I like that kind of shawl or whatever. Oh, right. Gotcha. I like, right. you know, this. it covers my arms in the way I like or mm -hmm. looks the way I like. Right. All right, let me just finish these. But I don't know as many people who re-knit sweaters. Um, didn't, um, what's her name from Knitting Circles? Um. Didn't she re-knit a sweater? If she did, it was the one she burnt. No, not, no, the one. Oh, Knitting Circle's not. Around, not Karen. Not Round the Twist. Round the Twist. Because I, I think she did re-knit the one she, Round the Twist re-knit the one she burnt. But right. I don't know if Knitting Circle's re-knit. Honestly, I can't remember someone who's re-knit a sweater. Right. Um, that they knit previously. That's kind of a, I think Laura has. Laura might have. I think she's done a couple of weekenders. Um, did, I just can't bring to my mind for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, no, I have to admit, I do have a bias in that area because I personally don't re-knit sweaters. Right. Um, I, I don't do a lot of projects over again. I, I've done, you know, of toys, of course, I've done multiple toys, but if I do it over again, it has to be something I really like, you know, like the hundred million cerebells I do or, you know, <laughs> the million bitties. Usually, and, usually oh. for me, it's accessories or shawls that mm -hmm. I'll re-knit. And toys. And toys, well, yeah. Okay, let me just... Put this aside oh, for a yeah. moment. That's smaller needle. So I can get to the next thing. This is my seven. Yes, guys, I'm getting a jump because I don't know what my week is going to be like. <laughs> so, okay. all right, uh, let me put this away. Okay, that is my. Uh, what did I call this? I know not. Um, bag end wrap. Oh, I forgot to put my thing back in there. Better put it back in. What thing? My, um, you know, keeping track of what row I'm on. Oh, okay. Might be a good idea if I put that all back in. Yeah, that might work. Might be a good idea. And I'm finding, funnily enough, that if I sit down and say, okay, like I was sitting at the doctor's office, and I sat and wrote, worked pretty much on one because I, I only took two projects, I think. And you sit there, and I sat there, I worked on it, like, oh, wow, I'm getting stuff done. <laughs> it's shocking. <laughs> Funny how that works. Um, okay, let me see here. My next one is in my bag. Is it in my Silver Shade USA TMNT bag? That's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And this is the other one that Taya gets a little bit of credit for because she joined it for me because I had so much trouble. I definitely get frustrated. If I get frustrated, yeah. I'm gonna tear it out. And I joined and did the first round because. Mm -hmm. Or the first two rounds, because I wanted to make sure that she didn't have even the possibility of accidentally twisting right. it. And this is the Thorns hood. I call it Arwen's hood. Uh, um, 
this hooded cowl and um, the colorway is it's Miss Babs and it's the blue slate colorway that's why it's called this orange cowl because it kind of and matches. she's doing the exact same version of the cow the thorns cow that I'm wearing right talented about getting my threads in the wrong place. Okay. All right. For some reason, I'm going to have to get the other kind of, because it's a little bit too big and it keeps popping out. Mm. But I'm, I'm not a whole lot of progress, but I did work on it. And I'm, I'm happy that it's not, you know, caused me any issues. So, and I like having it on the bigger cord. Mm -hmm. I think the smaller cord was the issue. And I actually put the cord up against yours, and it wasn't the same size, remember? It yes. said it was the right, same size, but it wasn't. So this is closer, I think. It's not stretched. It's it's still kind of bunched on here, but it's not stretched like we were afraid it would be on a bigger cord. And it's right. not so tight that I can't see my, my stitches. So, yeah. Um, Miss Babs in a blue slate. I really like this color, and I'm looking forward to having this. I'm not sure where I'll wear it, but I want it. Mm -hmm. So... Um, yeah, it's in here. Yay. This is the color where you can see it a little bit better. Can you see that? It's not coming really true to f color out there. Maybe I'm just not seeing it on the screen, but it's really pretty. Kind of blue gray, right up my alley color. Indeed. Oops. Funny. I have a bad habit of leaving my pattern out of my bag. Okay. So next for me, let me. Oh, I need to turn on my shirts again. They turn themselves off. Yeah. Okay. So next for me is um, in my, now I barely worked on this one, in my multiple tart eye clover burr bag. I could almost call this small bigger on the inside. Yeah. But um, this is Lothlorien. This is another uh, Thorin's cow. Because what I'm using these for, I need to have, this doesn't go with a lot of clothes, mm -hmm. this particular one. When I knit it, I was just like, oh, I'll, I want to knit this cowl. I don't see myself wearing it anywhere. Let me just use up this yarn that I have no idea what I'm going to use it for. Mm -hmm. And I think it was a Miss Babs uh, Maryland Sheep Award. I think so, too. Mm -hmm. And I just, I find that I'm wearing it a lot to block light over my migraine glasses. So I wanted some that are... A little good with more clothes for church. Mm -hmm. So this is in the Berlin colorway, and it's the same version of the orange cow. This is version two. So just a little bit of progress on this one. Very nice. That's a, I love Berlin colorway. It's funny because I don't necessarily like a lot of variegated, but I do like that one. It's pretty. I'm probably gonna do a plain blue one too, mm -hmm. just in case you know I have. Just so I have options. I want to, so I might do plain blue one, an orange one, and a yellow one as well. Yeah, green one. Yeah, I, I don't tend to wear a lot of green where I don't where it's not just plain. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I don't have a, like a lot of variegated green skirts. But okay, my next one is in my Silver Shed USA Green Star Wars bag. A lot of Silver Shed today. Um, this is my Mad Hatter cowl from the Cerebell pattern by Sarah Sweethearts, and this is Miss Babs Yowza in the Mad Hatter colorway. And Ty and I did a swap for this yarn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this one's a little wider than the other that I'm doing, so it might not be quite as long when I finish it. Mm -hmm. But but it is a full skein. It is a full skein. I gave you the red for that, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. I can't remember the name of the red. But. We have yarn shop here. <laughs> yeah, we just it's, trade. A, it's really good if we, anyone else needs this particular color, we look and see the other person's stash. So, okay, then mark off that I changed needles and then I can show my next one. Because I'm headed into the ankle. Let's see. Alrighty. So, next is in my. Um, Eh, there we go. Is in my Clover Bird Dr. Seuss bag. This is the one I've been working. This has been my main project all week. This is Balin's hood. It's a Thorns cow for me. We're 
the church is likely to be reopened for everyone, or it's already been open for people to go, but mask restrictions are going to be lifted um, by next weekend. next weekend. So I need to finish. Church is very difficult for me. Um, I overstimulate very easily, and I wanted to make sure that I had another way to bro block the light so maybe I could prevent myself from... Maybe I could walk out of there without too much issue instead of yeah. having a huge problem. And she walking. and she will continue to wear her mask. Yeah, simply because it's um, simply because I react to whatever cleaner they use. Well, I think also people wear perfumes. They have this. Yeah, that. yeah. Because sometimes when we sat on the other side of the church, sometimes the person in front of us, uh, one of the gentlemen, wore a very heavy cologne. And it's funny, like some things will affect me and other things mm -hmm. won't. It's funny because that affected me, but it didn't bother you. That particular yeah. one. Well, it must have been whatever the scent was, mm. was not one. Because it's not that I smell it. Mm. I taste it and I feel right. it in the back of my throat and right. then I get lightheaded. Right. Um, because I actually don't have that great of a sense of smell. Um, like, I can walk into a place and I'll taste Lysol. Um, I can I can taste the Lysol, too, if, if it's used too heavily. Um, but I've tasted it through my mask mm -hmm. before. Um, I just don't. Lysol is not my friend. Um, but anyway, so this is supposed to be a barrier to hopefully make it so I can tolerate church. If I can't, I'll do it on, continue doing it online. And she's going to continue to online daily mass because yeah. that's just not an option for her. Yeah. I mean, it, there is no, she will, she'll be wiped out for the, you know, all the time. Yeah. So I mean, already wiped out all the time. So she, but, you know. yeah, but yeah, but this is the yarn I gave her for this. Yes. So I'm actually getting close to done. I'll, I'm hoping to have it done, like I said, by Sunday. Um, so that's why I've been working primarily on this. I'm in the hood right now. It'd be great if you could have it done for Pentecost. That that's my plan. And until that's I get the tomorrow, other one. Though. Oh, Pentecost. Duh. Sorry. Yeah. No, you're right. I'm. Oh, well, I could. Well, you I to, easily could. You'd have to be monogamous. Well, I've been monogamous. <laughs> yep. Um, because I was. Because my knitting is done once I get my uh, eyelets all the way to the end here. Oh, that's not bad. So. What, what do you mean? You just have to seam it then? Yeah, then I just seam it. Oh, you should be able to finish it. Yeah. Um, Provided you can focus. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, and this isn't a hard problem pattern to focus on. The only problem might be is if I get light sensitivity. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, sometimes it'll be more than light sensitivity. Sometimes it's just that doing anything is too much effort. Mm -hmm. But if it's light sensitivity... Sometimes just looking at anything, even if it's dim light, looking knitting is too much. Right. But I'm hoping that won't be today. Hopefully I can just finish this. That will be nice. Because then the more you have in your arsenal for going to Mass on Sundays, the better. Because, see, we we go to Mass on, um, we our obligation, if you will, it's not mm -hmm. an obligation for us, but obligations is the word they use, mm -hmm. um, that we go on Sundays and Holy Days of Obligation. And by saying it's not obligations for us, you mean we're dispensed right now due to COVID. Well, also what I mean is that we don't consider it an obligation. Oh, oh I see what you're saying. Um, I see. We want to do this. But my point is she, does, she doesn't have to go to daily mass in person. Um, she's going to do it at home because mm -hmm. that's not an, it's not an obligation, if you will. It's not a, a requirement. I'm also dispensed if um, it becomes too much of mm -hmm. physical difficulty. Honestly, sometimes I was going before I was dispensed. Mm -hmm. Um so we're going to keep an eye on and see how much I can tolerate. Right. And we're hoping we're hoping, and praying that she can at least tolerate going to regular Sunday Masses, even if she can't go to the things that are really crowded, like Christmas and Easter and stuff, mm -hmm. like, and do that online. We will continue to do as much as we can. In you know, We will go in person yeah. we, because we won't be dispensed. We could be dispensed if there was a flu or something going around and, that we have a risk to bring back. Mm -hmm. But in general, we just try to be really careful and not bring it back. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, cause, as, and probably do that even more so now because it's been rough not being able to go. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah. But that's what these are for. Um, so I'm going to have multiple colors. I want an orange one. I want like a yellow one. Um, and probably at least a blue one because I have some zing. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'll have a whole collection. Cool. Uh, and Davina wants another one, I know. Oh, does she? She like a light blue. Does she want another lacy one? or? Yeah. I wouldn't be likely to make the lacy for myself. And I was going to do a cable on the edge of the red one, mm -hmm. but I decided, and I'm not sure if you notice this with cables, if you're cables a lot, 
when you do the cable, because it's pulling the stitches across, either underneath or over, it creates a little hole, minuscule, like what you mm -hmm. see for crochet. But because the whole purpose of this is to block lights, I don't need that hole that's a little bit more than what I would get just with the garter stitch. Right. Um, it defeats the purpose of the cowl for me. And this red one, I made the hood a little bit deeper. Right. They actually give you instructions in the pattern. If you want to make a shallower hood, or if you want to make a deeper hood, or if you want a longer neck or a shorter neck, they give you a bunch of things. Well, I have a question. If mm -hmm. for, uh, for that thorns thing, do you think you could do a, um, in a sport weight and not be affected, or in a... Um, they said anyway. Worsted? They said anyway. Worsted is actually what's called for. Well, I can do one of my long skeins of worsted, and you'd have enough, right? Because uh, it says it is like 500 and something. Hang on. I think it's like 500 and at least 560 at once. Well, I could do the long sport then. That's got 700 yards. Um, it, would be, it would just be lighter weight. And actually, it's not a bad thing as long as it blocks the light enough. That's the only thing um, for me. Well, I was talking about even for Davina. Oh, for Davina, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, 530 plus yarns of worsted mm -hmm. weight. The weight of yarn doesn't affect the size it that much just results in a difference in density of the finished fabric. So a lighter one might be nice, like you said, if it only you know, blocks the light for you or whatever, because I have that, um, I have six skeins of that lightweight, like 700 yards. Well, it might be a good time for you to develop a very springy, spring-like mm -hmm. blue, mm -hmm. light blue, because that would look, that's a color that looks really nice on Davina, because mm -hmm. um, I don't care, I carry that in my stash. Mm -hmm. And it would be a good way to test out that yarn. Right. And just, you know, some sort of light springy um, blue. Mm -hmm. She likes that color. She does. And she looks really good in it. Mm -hmm. That and yellow. Mm -hmm. But she doesn't wear the yellow I do. She mm -hmm. wears the light spring yellow. Whereas I wear more of a... You wear almost a gold or... Yeah, probably gold is the more correct. It has a different... Our yellows have a different tone to them. Right. She wears a bright yellow, a sun yellow. Mm -hmm. And that's what I was thinking of when I said that. I, and what what kind of undertones are you using yellow? I know they say an orange yellow, an orange undertone. What's the other undertone for you? Blue. Blue. So I guess hers is more of a blue undertone? Um, because her, hers and mine have different, different feels. Yeah. Well, you tend to wear the warmer, and that would be like the... That would be the know, orange, orange undertone. red undertone. Which makes sense. It matches what, what I tend to go with, which is the fall... Winter, but that doesn't necessarily mean what you should be wearing. Yeah. Um, I, I know that I tend to wear the cooler colors. I, I, we should both wear the cooler colors. With we have exceptions that we both wear, but mm -hmm. because of our skin tone and our hair color, um, and usually they have the cooler undertones like the blues. But I don't think either of us wear as much of the spring light color. Mm -hmm. Well, no, I'm not talking about spring colors. Yeah. Um. I tried to wear spring colors at one time or summer colors when daddy wanted me to wear yellow and I just don't like well maybe you should go on with gold yellow um I think gold tends to bring out the sallow unless it's like a um, a maize or something mm -hmm. like that color where it's actual a true gold and not like this kind of a try to want to be a gold mm -hmm. you know but okay let me just we're waffling let me just get this stitch finished so I have a place where I can put my uh, locking stitch markers so I don't lose my stitches. But because I do wear a lot of yellow, orange, and red, I need to ha make sure I have all those colors and hoods. Right. So that way, hopefully, I can look like it's on, on an on-purpose style and not just the practical reason. Yeah, well, I've gotten to the point where I don't care. Well, I mean, you know, I want to try to look like I'm, I'm dressing, right. you know. Okay, do you have anything else to show? No, that was it for me. Do you have a FO? No, I do not. Okay, let me just... Um put Mad Hatter it's down here. Neat. Okay, now mine, you probably know what mine is because I had a different baby hat on the loom. So I finished um, see I finished it. So I have two of these now. I'm not sure which one it was that I finished, but I finished one of these. Oh, I finished this one. I've got the uh, needle through it. So so this is the one I finished. It's a little bit bigger than the one I had already, so it's got a little bit more of a cuff to it. But I have to get these ready to go off to little preemie people. That's that. That's my FO. I still have a ton of this yarn left. 
so I guess that then leads us on to well I don't really have much to lay beads and string what I spent my whole time doing for beads and string is I had a bunch of rosary initially when I was doing my rosaries in my shops I was going to be just listing things that I had already made. I wasn't planning to do made to order. Mm -hmm. I changed my mind. And so I have a bunch of rosaries that they're like multiples of the same kind, just in different colors. And they're also in an older cord that I ended up getting rid of because I wanted to get a stronger cord. So what I did um, one day is I went through to actually try to increase the amount of beads I have without actually going and purchasing beads. <laughs> I went and I already had pictures of all these rosaries so people could know that I could make them. I went ahead and I uh, took apart all the rosaries with the old cord. So now I have a ton of beads to make special orders or to create new rosaries that are a new design. So I don't have a bunch of the same just sitting around. Right. And also I have a nice supply now of beads that are uh, reclaimed. They've never been used. Well, they've been, they've been made into rosaries, but they've never been used by a person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah. So, um, that that is good. Um, so, it's, it at least saves me a little bit of money. Because, honestly, I, that, I'm not using that cord, and it's, they were all just sitting there anyway. Um, but, yeah, that was all my uh, beads and string, and you didn't have any graphic novel, mm -mm. correct? I didn't think so. Um, and that leads us on to shop news. Okay, I did um, a fair amount of yarn dyeing this weekend. Those of you who follow me on Instagram or on Facebook saw the yarn hanging in my basement. It wasn't a very good picture of it, but it gets the idea across. I have uh, two, four, I think I have seven skeins down there and I think three of them are new colorways three um, of the colors are new colorways and then one that is a sort of new colorway um, I, I did a special order of that for one of the people who ordered it and it got a lot of attention so I made some more of it so I have you'll see it next week it's drying but <laughs> I'm looking downstairs and I'm like, wow, I had a definite thing going here. But anyway, you will see that probably next week, I hope, because I'll have time to, if not reskein it, at least it'll be skeined. Mm -hmm. And you can see what it looks like. And th that will be going up in the shop hopefully in the next week or 10 days. I have been having updates periodically a little at a time the last week. I think I'm going to do a sale for Memorial Day weekend. So that's next weekend. And uh, whatever's in the shop will probably be on sale. So... That might be something to keep your eye on. Um, for me, my sale for... I have a 20% off sale going for my rosaries for the month of May. So we still have about you know a week and a half or so um, before those rosaries go back to full price. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, that's about it for news. I mean, I've updated, made sure that all my rosary listings now say... Um, that they um, are made to order mm -hmm. because some of them were not available as made to order before. So right. now they all are. Okay. Um, then that leads us on to reading and such. Does it? Um, I think so. Let me hit cooking really quickly. Oh, I, oh I, wait. I, we didn't do st uh, stash, stash enhancements. enhancements. Yeah, I thought we would. Um, stash enhancements are first. Well, I got my um, silverware sh set that I told mm -hmm. you about. You know, Natalia got hers. Um, it has a wooden handle. I was a little concerned with that, but it seems to be really well made. So yeah. hopefully that will hold up well. And it, I'll wash it by hand anyway. And it's not going to be used all the time, just when I find the necessity because something is too Hers big. has a steak knife in it. Yeah. Steak knife. Not that I eat a lot of steak, but my husband makes a really good steak that's really soft so it doesn't bother my jaw. Mm -hmm. So I. <laughs> but it'll help you cut through a sandwich easier. Mm -hmm. Even if I take... Um, I can't have the hoagie bread. Yeah, the, mm -hmm. the big um, sub bread because it's too thick. Yeah. So, you know, I'll just take that off. But I can have, like, at Subway, they have those. Um, the flat bread. The flat bread. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I might have to cut that. But uh, at least I'll have the option now. Yeah. But uh, do you have other stash enhancement? I do. No, because I, I think I just got that. I mean, everything else was like well, you electrolyte had, stuff. Yeah, you had something else, but you'll see what it is in a second. Oh, okay. Um, I 
may have done some shopping of the purple package variety. Let me show you here. There it is. Plum Deluxe um, had a sale, and if I am even remotely needing something, I'm a sucker for his sales. Andy's. So I got, as I, I got my buttery shortbread. You guys know how, how much I like that because I was getting low on that. What I'm trying to do is um, use all my teas that are partially open so everything I have is unopened and I can kind mm -hmm. of know what I have. So um, this is my buttery shortbread because I finished that. And then this is my chocolate mint, like the cookie oolong tea that I just have had today. Because as I said, when I get rid of one, I need to have another one because I just can't, I can't think about not having it. So, <laughs> and then I have this did, little. Did you give me the Picard last? This no, time? this time, yeah. Okay, so I did get some. I just forgot which week it was. Mom got me some of the Picard yeah. Uh, tea. Yeah, I took, advantage, took advantage of this. And then this one, I said I was going to give to you. So. Oh, okay, thank you. So um, it's a decaf, black, wonderful pomegranate tea. Yeah. So that, that I had to wait till I have another small one of that because it's really not enough to make a cup of tea. Not for us because we don't do an eight or six or eight ounce. Yeah. We do a 14 ounce. So, yeah. yeah. It would be very, very weak if we did that. Okay. Um, yeah. That takes care of that. It does. So, um, then that leads us on to any cooking. I probably overdid it on, I think, was it Sunday that I did cooking? I forget what day or it, it might have been Saturday. It might have been Saturday. I think it was Saturday. I don't remember. I don't remember. Anyway, um, it was Saturday because I had a migraine on Sunday. Um, Friday or Saturday. What I did was I had um, made, I prepped in uh, cheese enchiladas. Um, it was che cheese and beans quesadillas, which now I have the tortilla shells. I need to defrost my um, filling. Mm -hmm. And um, and by cheese, I mean dairy-free cheese. Fake cheese, as fake, Daddy calls fake it. Fake cheese. <laughs> yeah, I prefer Daya uh, mozzarella. And I made um, breakfast. They call them breakfast enchiladas, but really they're like breakfast burritos. They have ham, fake cheese. And because I didn't have normal, normal gluten-free tortillas, I used spinach um, gluten-free tortillas. Let's see, was that all I made? made those three Your little things. breakfast cookies. Oh, yeah, I made the breakfast cookies. Yeah, I made four things. Mm -hmm. I made the breakfast cookies. So, um, yeah, I kept quite... Um, I did a lot. I have to... I had one more dish that I wanted to make, but I was starting to get tired, so I stopped. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, I need to... Like I said, I need to defrost the one, and I want to make more of the cheese enchiladas because I finished them. <laughs> I... If you if they put cheese in if they put enchilada on the name, five dinners one hours has me. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so that's I didn't do a whole lot of extra stuff cooking wise this time. I, obviously I cooked, but um, did a fair amount of reading. Um, I wanted to say I finished a book, but I don't know what it was. I can't remember. I'm still reading all the usual things, so I'm not going to go through and uh, belabor that point too much because I have to call my husband out of art and do things we have to do this afternoon but I am consistently reading while I'm walking on the treadmill and I um see I read on the treadmill I also do some of my religious activities when I'm on the treadmill the divine mercy and that kind of stuff and then uh my husband and I have been going for a walk now we have to judge the time because it's getting hot mm -hmm. so we don't want to be over hot. I mean, last time we went for a walk and we kind of misjudged it. And I ended up taking a shower afterward because I was just so, ugh, uh, just you don't feel right, you know. It's just right. Kind of feel grimy. So I went and took a shower afterward. But uh, we, we're trying to get outside as much as we can when the weather's cool, so that we don't have to be, um, you know, in the heat of everything, uncomfortable and just bleh. Yeah. So we do that. You know, Davina's starting to go outside. Um, more in the morning as opposed to the afternoon because it's cooler in the morning so she she goes out and does her thing so yeah that's um not a whole lot to really say about anything okay so then that leads on to me um i end up reading here and there 
Huh. So Tropical Storm Anna becomes the first named system of 2021 in Atlantic. Oh, Anna. Oh, before she, you go into that. Um, yes. You think what? Did, what did you just say about? You were saying. I said the tropical storm. I'm about to go into my books. Uh, I'll I'll do it. If, I I may interrupt you if I remember. Okay. So I did finish a few books. Mm -hmm. um, I finished A Visitor's Guide to Jane Austen's England by Sue Wilkes. All the books I finished ended up being five stars. Um, even though I accidentally did not write down, I accidentally left a star off of this one. There. Now it has its fifth star. Because Jane Austen's book deserves better. Okay, then I finished Laughter for the Sick and Tired by Kimberly Ray. And I finished rereading The Hobbit uh -huh, by J.R.R. Tolkien. Um, still reading... It's been a while since I picked it up, but I uh, started reading again where I left off. And James Albarione and Marvel for Our Times. Still reading from last week, Peace and Prayer, Wisdom from Teresa of Avila. Um, and Set Aside Every Fear, 30 Days of the Spiritual Master by Catherine of Siena. Um, also started reading, to replace the history book, The Rival Queens by Nancy Goldstone. And that's about Catherine de' Medici and her daughter Margot. Um... Catherine de Medici is a very interesting character. Um, started rereading Fellowship of the Ring. I'm taking my time. Um, as one of my booktube people's like, yeah, she's taking her time to live in the Shire a little bit. Yeah. Uh, just to really soak it in. And I, I'm trying to do that this time. Because usually I do kind of rush past the Shire when I'm reading. Because that's not where all the action is. So. Um, the Shire is a gentle place to be. It's a gentle place to be. And... As it's been pointed out in a lot of the book two pet things I watch, um, that are either purely J.R. or Tolkien or like this girl's just rereading. I'm almost done, Mom. I know we have to go. No, I'm, I'm, I'm doing my. Oh, okay. Um, that um, if you don't take time to appreciate the Shire, if you just skip the Shire, because apparently some people are like, oh, I skip the Shire and the um, harrowing of the Shire because it's pointless. And it's like, well, if you skip those things. That's important. Those are important. The Shire is what they are why they're going on this adventure that they don't even really want to go on, at least the hobbits. Mm -hmm. You know, if you don't take time to realize where they come from, you don't really understand the characters. Okay, before you start going into that, um, the rest of your stuff, are you still on the hobbits or are you going to go to the next one? I'm going to the next one. Okay. I um, did want to say that I'm still listening. Right now, I don't really want to watch anything, mm -hmm. so I'm listening. I finished listening to Cards on the Table by Agatha Christie, and now I'm listening to the various short stories. Uh, some that are read by Hugh Fraser, some that are read by um, uh, David Suchet, and uh, they're they're very good. I mean, they're restful. I can listen to them and not have to really focus because I know the stories, even though they're changed from the movies, drastically yeah, changed. Yeah, yeah. And we'll talk about cards on the table. Later, yes, but. I I do want to have a conversation with you about that because yeah. you know how much I hate the changes they made to that. It was pretty intense change there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, kind of no, offensively no, 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 so. No, no, I'm just saying it's offensively Move so. along. Because Move no along. respect for the... Uh, Suchet has respect for the author. Yes. But the people who create the show do not have respect for the twists that she put in or her characters. They change things drastically and it irritates me. Um, which is a shame because I love all the actors they picked. Mm -hmm. They did an excellent job choosing their actors. Um, okay, but I'm also reading Sick and Tired by Kimberly Ray. I'm taking my time with that because she, first of all, she addresses some of the things that I have felt and not been able to really put words to in a way that doesn't sound whiny <laughs> uh, when you're dealing with chronic illness. And she also has in the back of this one chapter I read questions to help you formulate in a short, concise way when people ask you, Oh, you're sick. What what do you have? The tendency is to want to start from the top and give everybody this whole story. Um, but you know you can't do that. So there's this pause as you try to figure out what, how much information. Right. It still gives the appropriate idea of what's going on with you. So she asks some questions and help you to formulate an easy answer that's understandable and explains what you have going on and why you need certain, you know assistance or whatever without having to go into the whole history of your life <laughs> so and, and this author Taya had passed mm -hmm. along I picked up a couple books of hers as well uh what it is is uh you're sick they're not and it's a 
actual book and a Bible study that goes with it. Now I'd have to kind of use my own Bible and stuff like that because she's not Catholic, which mm -hmm. is fine. Yeah. I, I'll just alter it a little bit, but she comes at it from a Christian perspective and it's not just for the sick person. It's for the people who take care of the sick person. Yeah, because she mentioned there's not a lot out there for caregivers. And before she got sick, she was a caregiver. So she's been in both. Mm -hmm. So. And I have found that, and I'm sure people, um, I know people, even in the group, mm -hmm. have mentioned to me that there's nothing out there for caregivers. And I've said as much several times. And so I'm very, I'm looking forward to um, reading, get, that. reading that and getting into that. But I don't want to do that one on the treadmill necessarily I want to sit down and do that one yeah because the laughter one didn't require as much attention as his other one that I'm reading from her because the laughter one was literally just something to laugh at mm -hmm. something to lighten your mood a little bit mm -hmm. but yeah so that's um all for reading anything personal oh I guess no we have uh our thank yous yeah that's all we have thank yous and we have to, we are moving our Zoom, I think it is. Yes, to Thursday. To Thursday. You guys will be getting a notification. Mm -hmm. I've set up up the automatics. For our Patreons, because Talia has um, a doctor appointment. My husband's actually driving because of the one that's out ways. Mm -hmm. And so we won't be able to do it on Friday. So we'll be. I don't have any close doctor appointments. Well, you used to have, you know. Yeah, not anymore. Not anymore. Um, anyway, we're going to be having that Zoom on Thursday this this month so that we don't have to do what we did last month, which is, you know, completely, you know, put it into a, an entirely different month. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go ahead and do it this coming Thursday for the Patreons, the Zoom. So all of you people who are Patreons, you've been told. Part of me kind of hopes, like, some people, like my migraine doctor, mm -hmm. will maybe keep the Zoom mm -hmm. option because he's even farther than my, um, I think he's even farther than my one for my uh, POTS and stuff. And, um, have you been out there yet? No, I only started with him during COVID. He might want to see you once. Yeah. Um, and then maybe he'll go back to zoom. Um, because it uh, would really be great if they kept that option for people who are way out mm -hmm. until you need to be actually doing something. Right. Right. And my other doctor always needs to be doing something needs to be taking vitals or whatever. But the migraine guy, um, unless he has something like he told people not to come in unless there was something that he needed to do in the office and he didn't have anything he needed to do in the office. So I'm kind of hoping I can keep him as a virtual because it goes really quickly. Um, and then I don't have to leave the house, but we'll see. It would be really nice if that was the case. Um, okay. So anything else? No, I should not really. It's just been a lot of fatigue this week. Yeah. It's been, um, a, a tiresome, tiring, not tiresome, tiring, I've been tired all week as well. Mm -hmm. And it's just, um, yeah, I don't know if it's the weather or what. So we'll, we'll hopefully I won't be as tired this coming week. Mm -hmm. um, we do want to thank everybody who has taken the time to comment. We're very grateful for everybody who watches, whether you comment or not. Mm -hmm. But if you comment, we want to take the time to thank you, whether it's on YouTube or on the PHN Home Group. Again, that's in the description box, the link below, okay? Um, that came out weird, but it's the in the description box below is the link to the home group. Okay, mm -hmm. we want to thank Brittany, Karen, Fiber Hermit, Warm Wish in Every Stitch. I is that Warm Wish in Every Stitch? Eileen. Yeah, it's, it's okay. all one name. Karen, uh, Karen Grabby Knit, Karen Grabby Knit, <laughs> Karen Grammy Knitterbug, and that's another one that's all one name. I think she might have a space. Yeah, I and then uh, Miss Pogo, Andrea. Wendy MacGyver, not her real last name. Mm -hmm. Joan, that's pretty knit. Sylvie. We and, have a couple people who... And, uh, and, 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 and Renna. And Renna. Got Renna. We have a couple of pe a few people that have their, like, not pretend to name, but you know... Their handles. Their handles. Thank you. Online name. Online name. And then their real name, either before or after. And now I'm thinking of Spider-Man. Oh, so we're... We're using our real... No, we're our made-up names. We're using our made-up names. I'm, I'm Spider-Man. Spider -Man. <laughs> Okay, so on that note, we want to wish you um, a very, very blessed week full of knitting, crocheting, whatever it is that makes your heart happy. With the restrictions being lifted, be careful out there. Mm -hmm. um, we want it's to. It's a jungle out there. It's a jungle out there. Reference. We want. Uh, we uh, hope to see you here again for the Foon and the Woman Cave next week. This is the Pen Hook and Needles Podcast, episode four fifty five, and that's a wrap.
Bye. I think I'm just getting this last stitch up here. It's getting the demo. I'll cut it. Ugh. You knocked all the toys down.